This video applies to dogs, cats, and ferrets. Let's jump into the requirements to move to Germany with your pet. Number one is the age. The minimum age to import your pet to Germany is 15 weeks old. Second requirement is a microchip. Your pet needs to have a microchip that confirms to EU standards. Now I'm gonna read these standards out loud and it's gonna sound a lot like technical, but don't worry, just make sure to talk to your doctor and provide these standards and I'm pretty sure they will know what to do. The standard, the transporter of the microchip needs to comply with the following. A, comply with ISO standard 11784 and apply HDX or FDX B technology and B, be capable of being read by a reading device compatible with ISO standard 11785. The microchip is mandatory for pets that have re been remarked since July 3rd, 2011. If your pet was marked before this date, then it's okay if they travel with you to Germany if they have a tattoo. However, this tattoo needs to still be readable. So the immigration, I mean more like the customs, people will be able to identify your pet without any issues. Now, if your pet does already carry a microchip, however, it does not match the ISO or ISO standards, then you have three options. Option A is you can bring a device that reads or is able to read the microchip of your pet so that you know immigration officers can read it with your device. We don't know how much such a device is or how accessible they are. Or B, you can call your EU port of entry in advance and try to talk to them and ask them if they might have or will have a device that can read your pet's chip. Also maybe not the safest option. Or C, you can ask your vet to re-implant a microchip that actually does follow the ISO rules, which is probably the most sustainable option, especially if you would intend to travel with your pet also in the future. Yes, totally agree. Third requirement is that your pet needs to have a valid rabies vaccine. It is important that the rabies vaccine is done after your pet has been microchipped. This is so it's, there is no doubt that the vaccine belongs to your pet. Right. According to German customs regulations, at least. Or EU, right. Yeah. So the, the rabies vaccination is one of the most crucial things for your pet to have. And without that, you will be in trouble. We go into that a little bit further on in the video. Now, if your pet receives its primary rabies vaccination, you need to wait 21 days until your furry friend will be allowed to enter Germany. Because it takes at least that amount of time for antibodies to build up. Now, what is a primary vaccination? So according to the EU um, documentation, a primary vaccination is one that is done directly after your uh, pet has received the microchip, or the other occasion is when your pet had a valid rabies vaccine, it expired, some time went by, and then you did the rabies vaccination again. So it pretty much counts as a first vaccination in that case. Yes, if your pet has just been reboosted with the rabies vaccine, then you don't need to wait the 21 day period. The fourth requirement is that your pet needs to have an animal health certificate. Now this applies for non-EU countries. If you are part of the EU, then you don't need the certificate. It's the equivalent of having the EU passport. I mean, EU pet, pet passport, not yours, right? Like for your pet. <laughs> But if you need this animal health certificate, we cannot really give you extensive guidelines here because it highly depends on your country. Uh, I've read, for example, different rules for US, Brazil, and whatsoever. So your best bet is to contact your Ministry of Agriculture or similar, and they are the ones that will tell you the requirements for gaining this um, animal health certificate, animal health certificate before you travel to Europe. Yes, and be sure you really do inform yourself because we know that certain countries have strict deadlines and like a strict timely schedule that you need to follow. Already with the rabbi, rabbi's vaccination, we have 21 days. There's some, we've heard about 10 days regarding the animal health certificate. So be sure to have your info correct so that you can really get everything done to schedule and you will be able to enter Germany without any problem. Yes, totally. Now the fifth requirement is not necessarily for everyone. This is only required sometimes and that is to have a rabies antibody test. This applies to 32 countries, which were listed right now on the screen. We have written more details about the rabies antibody test in our written guide at simplegermany.com, which you can find the link in the description box below. There's also an example of what the result looks like and the minimum, I don't remember the measure of uh, 
the result that needs to be for it to be valid and accepted to enter the EU. And most often or not, you are, can only do this test after at least 21 days have passed after the rabies vaccination. Yes. So you need to plan even more time to prepare your pet to travel or move to Germany. Yes. Now, what happens if you have a snub-nosed pet? What do we mean by that? Some popular breeds in dogs that have a snub nose are the French Bulldog and the Pug. And also for cats are the British Shorthair and the per Persian. Persian. <laughs> if you are unsure if your pet has a snub nose, then it's best to consult with your vet for them to be able to determine it for you before you travel. Because this is a thing. Usually you will not be able to travel with your snub nosed pet on passenger airlines. So there is not a bunch of information out there. And this is thanks to one of our viewers from Brazil who shared this information with us and they moved from Brazil to Frankfurt and they were not able to book any flight. So the thing is that according to the Lufthansa um, documentation or FAQs, the reason is that snub nosed animals because they have breathing difficulties during a flight, which apparently for passengers might have different temperature and more stress maybe in the cargo box, in the cargo box they will will uh, probably suffer some circulation things and they even say that some could even die. I mean, it sounds very dramatic. I'm not so sure. This is what the what the website says. Also, I found on American Airlines, for example, they say that they do not accept snub nose, snub nose pet to travel at all. So what do you do? There's a really cool service from Lufthansa called Live Animal Cargo and that one you can book for them. So they, it's a cargo airplane. So I imagine the temperature and stuff is totally different than for a passenger one. And they also say that uh, you have like a dedicated team to take care of the pets that travel. Um, they not only travel with animals in this cargo, they also travel with food and other things. Um, however, they guarantee that your pet will be taken care of before um, departure, during the flight and afterwards. So you're not, the pet won't just be in a dark hole, but actually has humans around it to, yeah. Take care of exactly. them. Yes, definitely. So make sure to check that ahead of time. Um, and most likely you will probably need to book a Lufthansa live animal cargo flight. <laughs> and coordinate that flight with your own flight. Yes. Definitely. Now, what if you travel to Germany with your pet and you don't follow all the requirements? You and your pet might be in trouble. And this is really not cool because we learned about this in detail when we actually visited the animal shelter here in Düsseldorf. And they showed us the area and explained to us in detail what happened to these pets. Because mm. there is, of course, a quarantine section on the animal shelter and they receive pets from the local airport directly that don't um, follow these requirements. So the most dramatic um, requirement that you could miss is the rabies vaccination or antibody test if you need one. Because in that case, your pet will be confiscated and put into quarantine in, for example, the shelter that we went to, uh, went to visit. And that means that really your pet is in a box hmm. that it cannot leave because of course the risk here is that it might be infected with rabies which it might be able to um, transmit to the other animals and uh, that, that are in the shelter and that would be mm. the worst case scenario. Meaning your pet will most likely not be able to exit the box for at least 21 days after it was able to get a shot in, in Germany. Um, and this is not only a trauma and stress for your animal, but it's also super expensive. When we visited the shelter in Düsseldorf, um, one day, the cost for one day for a dog was 23 euro and for a cat was 20 euros. Now, if you multiply that by 21 mm -hmm. or more days, because again, you still need to get that shot, right? Before right. the days start counting, that can easily be four to 500 euros or more, depending on, on what happens. Yeah. Worst case is if you try to bring a pet that's too young because then it cannot be vaccined yet. And then the whole time even expands uh, oh. longer and longer. Yeah. So make sure that you have all the paperwork, all the necessary paperwork to move happily and smoothly with your pet to Germany. Now you also need to know that there are some restrictive breeds that are not allowed to come to Germany at all. Let me read them out loud because um, this is a bit, I want to actually, uh, how do you say this, uh, say this verbatim as per the immigration or customs German page. The Dog Transfer and Import Restrictions Act prohibits the import or transfer into Germany of certain breed of dog and crossbreeding of these dogs with one another or with other breeds. And these are Pitbull Terrier, American Stadtforshire Terrier, Stadtforshire Bull Terrier, Bull Terrier. Oh my, I, for the life of me, I can't say that name, but you, it's written, so you know what I mean. So this means the interesting thing is not even crossbreeds are allowed to be imported. So if you, for example, have like a pit bull breed with a Labrador, that is also not allowed. 
Now, like all rules in Germany, there are of course exceptions. Don't freak out just yet. And that is if the dog that is one of these breeds or is a cross breed is a security or watchdog, a guide dog or a rescue dog, then they could be allowed to enter the country. Now, according to the German customs website, these kind of dogs need extra certificates and proof of things. For example, a pedigree degree, a character, um, a character test and other certificates is what we saw on the website, which we don't know what that is. So your best bet there is again to consult maybe with your German embassy as well as your foreign ministry. No, what did I say before? The Ministry of Agriculture, which is usually the one in charge of allowing animals to leave the country to make sure that you can align what other certificates you need to bring such a such a breed to Germany. Now that you have landed in Germany, the question is, can I bring my pet on the train? Yes, you can. However, <laughs> oh. there is an however. So we need to dis uh, distinguish here between, um, let's say, the in German called Fernverkehr, so the uh, intercity trains, usually from Deutsche Bahn, and the local transportation within a city. Um, because they have different rules and guidelines. So for the Deutsche Bahn, their website is very strict and straightforward. And they say that if your pet is smaller than or not bigger than an average house cat, which what, what is, is an average house cat? <laughs> I mean, if, if the, the transporter, the carrier bag that your pet fits in, fits under the seat um, of the, the chair, under the seat, under the of, seat the train, of the train, yeah. then it is a house cat pretty much, then it can travel for free. Mm -hmm. um, now on the Deutsche Bahn, your pet always needs to be leashed. And it also says all pets always need to be muzzled. However, to be honest, I don't even know if that in reality is always the case or really just the bigger dogs are always muzzled. But the website says all dogs uh, need to be muzzled and leashed at well, all times. Well, if they are outside of the carriage. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Now, also, if you travel with the Deutsche Bahn, meaning like you travel for a long distance, then you need to buy a ticket for an unaccompanied child between the ages of six and 14. Also, the Deutsche Bahn says, the website says that you can't buy this ticket online, that either you have to do it through a machine or at a counter in a train station. So if you have bought a ticket like this before, please comment in the, in the comments below whether you have been able to do this online or not, because I find that super weird. Yeah, but otherwise, just go to the machine at your, at your track and buy an unaccompanied ticket for a child from the 6th to 14th to carry your dog that is bigger than a house cat on a Deutsche Bahn <laughs> well, train. Now, if you're traveling with local transportations, this is an example, let's say you land in Frankfurt and you're going to stay in Frankfurt, that would qualify maybe with local transportation? Yeah, it's pretty much for the trams, buses and S-Bahns within a city. Yes. Um, sometimes also the regional trains which are operated by Deutsche Bahn but qualify for local transportation mm. um, but whenever you jump on an ICE or IC train that is definitely considered the big trains the, the Deutsche Bahn trains yes. but anyways for the local transportation this one is also a tricky one because we found for example on the local transportation for this area of Germany <laughs> so Düsseldorf VAR meaning like also the Rhein Ruhr area yeah they say that you can travel for free with your animal regardless of the size and you only have to have your animal leashed and only dangerous breeds need to be or like aggressive breeds need to be muzzled right however but, yeah but of course this is their way of welcoming um pets on mm. on their transport vehicles however the ultimate let's say um, decider. ruling a decider is the operator so the driver drive of that vehicle so mm. for whatever reason if the driver decides hey it's too full um then or your dog presents itself dangerously um then they can also deny you the right Yes, and also then we found on, in Berlin that apparently you do need to buy a ticket for your pet to but be able to But only if it's bigger than a house cat. Yeah, so again, with local transportation, your best bet is to ask actually um, in that city. There are tons, usually there are tons. There's one service office usually in the main train station and there I'm pretty sure they can inform you what the regulations are for your pet that you can show them and hey, do I need a ticket or not? Right, but as a rule of thumb, if you have a pet that is a house cat or smaller, then it's pretty much for free. Just make sure it's always leashed. And if uh, you have a, let's say dog, because I don't think a ferret is bigger than a house cat, um, <laughs> then you should inform yourself uh, if you're outside of, let's say, the Düsseldorf area, because there it's pretty obvious from our research. Yes. Also, another tip is that usually also in these big international airports, you also have offices of the Deutsche Bahn that you can go ask for information as well. We hope this information will help you move to Germany with your pet more smoothly. smoothly. If you want to know more specifics about owning a dog in Germany, then make sure to click on the video that's here on the left. Until next time, cheers! How are my eyebrows? Harry. <laughs>
The minimum age to import your pet into Germany is 15 months old. Weeks. <laughs> 15 months is a bit excessive. Let's do that again. Yes, of course. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>